multiple fires here in California. Turned day into night. Terrible conditions. 30,000 residents were told to evacuate. Complete destruction. Scorching more than 100,000 acres. Looks like a war zone. The campfire has become the deadliest wildfire in California history. So we're going to keep them the same group as yesterday? Uh, minus the boys group. But we're going to take the boys group and disperse them. Right there is the color. And then we could take so those groups back at the end of the day. Which color are we taking away? I was orange, so the, take away the orange color. So we meet here in the beginning at 9. We take the same groups we took yesterday in the beginning. And then we rotate the same rotation we use. We're out. All right, we're going to go in. Six great teams. <laughs> <laughs> the twins' powers activate form of a flexible chicken. So the fire was on November 8th. From there, we had a chunk of time off that, that bled into Thanksgiving, and when we came back, we were at uh, the Chico Mall. We had a little location. Um, it was, uh, I don't even know the storefront at this point, but the high school was in an old Lens Crafters, and we were on a kind of an outside of the mall location. It was inside, but the door was outside, and we were there for about two and a half weeks up till winter break. We found out about this location just a week before we got into it. It's an old hardware store. We're told that we'll be here about seven weeks. We were not even at ground zero anymore. We didn't start over. We started behind um, where we even started with at the beginning. So we are trying to make it our new not permanent home for Paradise Intermediate coming from Lower Paradise. We're doing the best we can to make it into a school. Moving aisles, moving shelves, trying to decorate, trying to make it safe and homey for our students. Challenge for being in the stores, the noise has been really difficult to deal with. We didn't add anything new to it, but we clarified some great. So yesterday, remember I was telling you I wanted It's hard to hear the students and what they need. It's hard to for them to hear us as well. Can you do two of you and then another two who rotate out? Right. Wow, there's a lot of challenges, but <laughs> I'll try to keep it down. The biggest challenge of all is sound. One of the things about this building, it's really hard to hear. So if I'm in there, you won't be able to hear me. So I'm trying to get everyone. Miley, can you scooch in a little? Thank you. And just pull your chair right there. And in a learning environment, especially with middle school students, if we don't have that good sound quality where we can hear each other, it makes it very straining and difficult to, to actually teach. Metric is easy because everything is by 10. I think Ben said that yesterday. Sound and space, just trying to hear everybody and make sure that they hear you and listen to the students 
um, and have a space to do your job. Just trying to teach in narrow aisles is really hard. Um, another big problem is, is there's very um, little Wi-Fi access that's been difficult and not having textbooks or materials to give to the students would be okay if we had Wi-Fi. We're trying to use hotspots. We don't have Wi-Fi because uh, there's no hard line into the building that we can use so everything's being done through cellular and it's just difficult to get enough bandwidth through cellular to run you know, all the Chromebooks and devices that students need. So the way it works with technology and students is you either have it 100 percent or you can't really use it. If students are dropping off a of Wi-Fi, they get frustrated, they don't finish their assignments, and it makes it really difficult to complete assignments. And, and we have stuff for students to do. It's, we just don't know what the next step is going to be. So we don't know what the next step is until it's almost ready for that next step to take place. And so that's been difficult. Adaptation, yes, environment and adaptation. So we're going to start talking about that a little bit today. And you are going to write me a paragraph about adapting to this new environment. You've created a map of our new school environment. And so I want to um, have you guys do the writing piece, which is showing how we adapt. The size isn't such a bad challenge uh, because we have fewer children to deal with. Originally in seventh grade, we had 231 students and now we have 60. As of today, I think it might be 61. We finally got a whiteboard yesterday, so the first few days without even having a whiteboard was really difficult. The day before I started, I had nothing to teach with. I had no paper, no pens, no expo markers, no whiteboard, no chairs, no desks. We are uh, slowly accumulating those. I've been given gift cards to buy teaching supplies, so I have some of what I need. Seating, we didn't have proper seating at first. Um, we're using shelving as, as desks, um, but it has, you know, being creative has been fun. Um, so we're able to have standing desks and s sitting desks. It's very um, fluid as far as how to change things and uh, it offers opportunity for that if I'm gonna go glass half full. Um, but that's been kind of tough to, to, to do. Every time I go to work with a student or show them something that it's constant reminder of what I have back in paradise that I don't have here. The supplies at the school were not allowed to go back there because when the fire went through uh, the smoke was filled with toxic chemicals and it coated everything with that and we're not allowed to take those items out. Also one third of our school burned so some of our teachers don't have any uh, supplies, but the supplies that are up there are off limits to us. I've gone out and bought several school supplies because we don't seem to have everything we need. Um, yesterday I went and bought a clock so that the students and teachers on my aisle can see what time it is. I, I've said before that middle school is often the forgotten the forgotten age and middle school teachers feel the same way? Uh, we are a bit of the middle child for sure. As the middle school, it seems like the high school's got a lot of attention. They haven't put anything in the paper where we were. There's been news press releases. Uh, the partitions just went to the high school. They get a lot of media. They've gotten a lot of donations. And they're in a pretty nice facility, an old Facebook facility with carpet and acoustic tiles and They've got carpet, they have ceilings, and they have crews helping them, and I'm just going, don't forget about our students too. I know they have their challenges too, there's no doubt they have their challenges. Uh, they're definitely not as constrained as we are in this setting. The elementary schools are in regular classrooms and portables, so I know they're, they've been crowded, but they, ba they have basically a normal traditional classroom 
as opposed to an aisle of a hardware store. It definitely just feels like we all need support and middle school is often kind of forgotten. I, I have little bits and pieces of my 7th and 8th grade years. Um, I, I would imagine that they will never forget this experience. We're not talking about islands or deserts though. Our environment we've been learning about is our new school. And so this school uh, here in this warehouse is an environment. Naturally in a warehouse, especially one that used to be a, an OSH building, we have tons of shelving, and so we've adapted by turning it into standing desks, sitting desks. Yeah, the office is in a customer service area, right? That's, that's not a usual thing. Well, we're working in teams now. I haven't, um, haven't worked with other teachers where we've been team teaching, and that's actually been really cool, really exciting. Um, and definitely more fluid. You know, before you always worried about the constraints and staying in the room, and now students can be moving between groups, and you just realize what's really important and what's not as important anymore is controlling your environment. It's really just about staying connected with the students. So the rings will be the metal part to your left. And we'll get us some Sharpies tomorrow to put names on the front, but didn't have those today. That's okay. It's kind of been fun walking up and down the aisles, trying to find innovative ways to use the materials that we do have in every aisle. And every once in a while, you find a treasure of something tucked away on a shelf or uh, in the back room that was used for something else and trying to repurpose it into something useful. Excellent, These all of the ends of these aisles had plastic caps that you would put the price tags in and we cut them to a meter stick so you guys could use them for science, you used them to measure um, this environment, find out how long our new school is, how wide the school is, how far it is to the bathroom, etc. I scavenged a whiteboard, so I have a whiteboard now, but I don't have a projector or a TV or a teacher computer or test tubes or many things that I'd normally use for teaching science. So we had to get really creative. Today we did a lab with, uh, with water bottles. And we did a water bo bottle flipping lab because I don't have beakers or test tubes or any way to measure volume. So we use just standard store water bottles. All right, so what we're gonna do with these is I've always wanted to know, of all these years I've watched you guys and girls bottle flipping. How many milliliters do you think are perfect? This is 500 when it's full. Well, we're gonna find out because we're scientists and we don't guess, we experiment and we prove. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a water bottle and you can just empty it out and you're gonna count, you're gonna be very precise you're going to make sure the water goes exactly to the 50 mark. Then you're going to do it with 200 milliliters, and you're going to flip it again 15 times. And then you'll go to 300 milliliters and flip 15 times. And you're going to record on this data sheet right here. They'll never forget this moment in their life. You know, really, it's about relationships, and it's really that we care about each other. Maybe they'll get some learning in there, but I just know that this is more of life that we are learning about. I think one of the biggest skills we can teach students is how to be resilient and problem solve. And every single minute in this place is a problem solving experiment. I hope that they see how much effort they've put into it as well as us and that they learn from that. The staff cares about each other, the students care, and that we're all in this together. They get to see people collaborating under difficult circumstances. They're getting a lot more education than I think they realize they're getting. And I, I hope that they see that in their future. We're going to have some great stories. There's a lot of things we can write about. And um, we are survivors.